Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I am so excited to be bringing you my MCU Phase 4 ranking. Now, there are some stuff that I haven't watched yet that I do need to add to this list. Um, and this list might totally change. Um, like, I haven't seen... Um, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever yet, Werewolf by Night, Moon Knight. When I eventually watch those, I will do an update Phase 4 ranking and add those ones that I haven't seen yet. But, this does include pretty much everything up until, uh, I want to say, Guardians. Holiday Special, except for the things I mentioned, Black Panther, Werewolf by Night, Moon Knight. So, I'm really excited to start off this list. So, let's start with number 14. Number 14 is the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Now, I liked Falcon and Winter Soldier, but look, I'm, but it even came to a certain point where I was like, I'm really liking this. I'm really liking the story. I'm loving the action. I'm loving, obviously, I love that Sam Wilson is now Captain America. I love seeing Baron Zemo back. I love seeing Agent Carter. Uh, I mean, not Agent Carter. <clears throat> um, God, what's her name? Her niece. Um, I love how Bucky's dealing with like PTSD uh, because of the whole thing of being a Winter Soldier. But it even came to a point, like a certain point in that series where I was like, come on, I'm actually... I want this episode to be over. Like, I thought that... What suffered from Falcon Winter Soldier is that they didn't do, like... A, um... Like, this is part one... Of an episode, this is part two. The whole thing of, um... Dealing with John Walker... Could be almost a whole season. And then... The whole thing of... Sam Wilson also trying to become... A black Captain America could be another season. And then when you get your season three, which is like your finale season, it could be your Captain America and your Winter, and Winter Soldier series. But they did... Uh, I don't want to say cram it in, because that is being a little too harsh on it, but I do think that there's something about um, the... What's it called? The There's something about that show that makes it kind of go like... I wish it was higher, but I do understand where you're going. So, that's that's where I'll put uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. Number 13 to me is What If. Now, What If has some cool concepts, and to be honest, I don't think I even finished all of it. Um, there are times that I want to put below Falcon Winter Soldier, but I do think it gets higher because I did think that there were some cool ideas inside of, um, like, the Peggy Carter episode. I really, really dug. I also like some elements of the T'Challa uh, as Star-Lord. The T'Challa Star uh, one may have what kind of made me go, like, I'm going to wait until the whole series comes out and binge it. Uh, because this is a bit, I don't want to say awfully written. It was a bit too strange. See, like, there are so many cool ideas with the multiverse. And this was one of the first things to actually introduce the multiverse to the MCU. This and Loki, before No Way Home and the Multiverse of Madness came out, right? So, I think that What If has some cool, has some really cool ideas for the multiverse. But I think that, I think it was kind of weird seeing that black seeing that Charlie Boseman as T'Challa as Star-Lord, I was like, that is not a, like a, uh, what do you call it? That is not a character that I would imagine being Star-Lord. Like, Peter Parker, maybe more the possibility. Um, and stuff like, I don't know, Maybe something like Tony Stark. 
uh, because they have that kind of quippiness. But I'm like, I don't really see, like, Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa being Star-Lord. Like, and I guess the thing is, too, is that, like, if they did live action, it might be a little bit doper to me. Because I'm like, oh, wow, this is actually kind of cool. But because it's animated, and, like, I love animation, don't get me wrong. I love things like Scooby-Doo and Batman and Superman and... Spider-Man and stuff like that, when they're animated. But, I think because I'm so used to seeing the MCU as live-action movies and series, this one kind of fell down because it's like, well, why do you bother, type thing. Um, so that's why I put What If as 13. Number 12 for me is Black Widow. Now, I saw Black Widow in the theatre. This was around the time that theatres were... Um, Still a thing before the pandemic really hit. And I liked Black Widow, but I don't think it was one of the... Oh my god, this is one of the greatest MCU movies ever type good. Um, I think that Black Widow... Scarlett Johansson's great. I think that... Like... At first, I didn't even... I thought I was watching the wrong movie at first. Because when you saw the young... Yelena and young Natasha. I'm like, that's a weird casting if that's supposed to be Natasha. So, I was like... Really? This is an actress that you... Go for for... Natasha? Okay. Like, I thought that the chick that played the young Yelena was great. But the thing is, is that, like, even though that Yelena was marketed in the trailers... We didn't really get her name. We didn't know what kind of role she was playing... We didn't know that she was going to be the sister of Natasha. We didn't really get that until, to be honest, I thought it was a friend at first. But then when it was like, I want to say, like when they meet up again and they have the guns out and then Scar Johansson says sister, I'm like, oh, they're meant to be si sisters? They don't even look nothing alike. Like, but to be fair, that is coming from someone who actually looks a lot like... Uh, that doesn't look a lot like his other members in the family because he has born... Because I have blonde hair, my rest of my family has brown hair. But I think that there were great family dynamics and great spy elements, but I think that there were cool ideas with the farm about the end, especially like the whole like flying down uh, the sky on the broken bits of the base. I thought that there were some cool bits in there. But it did feel a bit like, um, like they knew that the pandemic was coming, so I was like, quick, throw some big CGI, special effect, um, like, super finale ending. And it just didn't really quite work for me from what I remember, because I, to be honest, from, like, Loki, uh, like, basically from this up, I've watched this stuff more recently, but Black Widow Down, <coughs> I haven't watched since the theatre or since they came out onto Disney Plus. So when I do my Disney, my not my Disney Plus, my MCU reviews, uh, with Phase One to Three and that early start of Phase Four ish, I will talk about my actual feelings on these other movies. But that's why I have Black Widow at number twelve. Now, number 11 is Loki. I like Loki. I think that there was some cool, like... I think that the relationship between Loki and Sylvie was great. I think that um, the relationship uh, between Mobius and Loki was great. I thought that the missions were interesting. I thought that the variants were really cool. That was what made the entire show for me. And that whole thing of um, Loki... Splitting the multiverse in half at the end. I thought that that is what, like... We'll get to we'll get to this movie... Um, once I get past a few more others. But I thought that the bit where Loki splits the uh, multiverse in half... I thought that that's what, we, what would lead to No Way Home. Because we actually got... I want to say... Yeah, it was in the show. It was the whole, like, purple stuff in the sky. I thought that that's what was... Um, like, breaking open, like, that was the Loki version where it was like, you have 
different, like, you have this one concurrent one, and then you have, like, different multiverses, but that, the ones that are going out like that are ripping between the universes. And I thought that that's what was going to lead to No Way Home, but it doesn't. Um, I do like Phase 4, I love Phase 4, I think it's great. It's an underrated phase, let's say that. I think that Loki was really good. I th thought that it was a great setup, but not necessarily a great payoff to what we eventually got with the other stuff. But number 10 is Iron Groot. Iron Groot, I liked, but it's one of the things where it's like, these, these other things down, I get why they were made. It was like, what if Loki, No Way Home, and Multiverse of Madness, you want to kind of sell your idea on the multiverse. The other stuff, like... You need to try and finish some storylines from Endgame. That's why you have like things like Falcon and Winter Soldier and uh, WandaVision. It's like you also want to um, give this character a solo movie. That's why you have Black Widow. But I Am Groot is one of those things where I'm like, why did you make this? Other than making like a little animated show type thing for kids, I don't think that that's what needs to be, um, like, a part... Of, I don't think that's what needs to be a part of this canon. This this can be more of a, like... This is based on the group that you've seen in uh, Volume 2, or even late Volume 1. And... But it's more like a, um... A kid show. It's like when you have... Kind of like what they do in Spider-Man Freshman Year. How it's like, this is Spider-Man Freshman Year. Or we're doing because I think they cancel again. And then, um, it's like, these are the movie versions. So it's like, they're similar, but they're different enough that you could make that differ uh, a differentiation. So they can be different um, and be in two different corners of the MCU. But I think that I Am Groot's fun. It's really like three minute, I mean, uh, five minute shorts. I think it's really fun. If you have kids, they'll really like it. So, <coughs> number nine for me is Shang-Chi in The Legend of the Ten Rings. Now, I think Shang-Chi, I was worried about this movie watching it first. I was like, okay, I'm worried. What the hell is going to happen in this movie? Because I'm like, I, know, I already know Wong and Abomination got show up. I know, I've heard rumours that um, Travis Slattery from Iron Man 3 is coming back. But I'm like, what is going to be the point of this movie? And I actually really liked it. I don't think it's as great as everyone else because I did come to it a little later. Because when it got to stuff like Shang-Chi and Eternals that also I haven't seen, um, I was like, I'm not really interested in these things. Like... I'm interested in, like, the classic characters we, uh, ha are, have already established. Like, even various of them. Like, Peggy Carter, and Falcon with Soldier, and Black Widow, Loki, Groot. But chong chi I thought was a really, really good movie, but not, like, a top five, top ten Marvel movie for me. It might be, <coughs> like below She-Hulk, and She-Hulk is surprisingly not that very high on my list, um, on my overall MCU ranking, so, but I think that it will go, like, a little below She-Hulk, but I, I actually do like Shang-Chi, I think that's really good. Now, number eight for me is, well, like I mentioned earlier, She-Hulk. I think She-Hulk was really, really good, because you had that, um, like, blend of, like, Comedy, drama, and action. And I think that most of those episodes carry that through line. Um, and the episodes wanted me to keep getting invested in what was going on. I thought that the comedy worked. I loved episode 8, seeing Daredevil back. Um, and I loved seeing Bruce in mainly the first episode, like, I, the second episode for the one scene he's got, and, like, the two scenes he's got in the uh, ninth episode, I really liked him. Hulk is one of my favourite characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially since they got Mark Ruffalo, because Edward Nolan, eh. But, to me, She-Hulk lands in that spot because I love seeing Abomination back, I love seeing Wong back, and the fact that ties 
to Shang-Chi and seeing Hulk and Abomination fight for like, I want to say about five seconds again. And <laughs> also stuff like um, seeing stuff like, um, obviously Daredevil was great. Uh, Madison, which I think is very funny. The, like, uh, Madison with two ants, one Y, but it's not what you think. I think that she is one of the most ridiculous characters. And I love her. I just love her. I think that she's a very, very, very funny character for She-Hulk. And I hope... If they do a season two of she hulk I hope she comes back in some way. Because I think that that actress made me crack up during that episode. I thought that I thought that she was just great. Now, number seven for me. I haven't finished the ninth the last episode. Miss Marvel. I really enjoyed Miss Marvel. I think I liked the family dynamics. I loved um like the episodes where she's discovering what to do with these powers and that sort of stuff. The thing that got me about Miss Marvel, though, and I think that they got better as the episodes went along, but that first two episodes in specifically, it felt like I was watching a like a Disney Channel or Netflix. I mean, not Netflix, Nickelodeon show. And I was like, why does it feel like this? I don't get why it feels this way. But, I mean, I'm liking it, but... Why are they doing this? And then when I saw the later episodes, I'm like, oh, okay, this one actually has more depth and meaning to the MCU. And the fact that it's going to play into the Marvels next year is so bloody cool. I can't wait to see what happens with that. Now, number six for me is the more is mainly the reason why I'm doing this list. It's the Guys of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Like, come on. Like, jeez. I'm... I love Guys of the Galaxy, especially Volume 2. I do think Volume 1 is much better than I give it credit for. I think that this was very funny. Seeing Kevin Bacon in it uh, from that reference to Infinity War, that Spider-Man and Star-Lord were even like talking to each other back and forth about Footloose. I thought that that was just fantastic. Um, and like the fact that we get to see more of Mantis and Drax's interaction and their relationship. I thought that that was really, really cool. The fact that we see, uh, like, especially having, like, the first Guardians, then Volume 2, then Infinity War, Endgame, and the Holiday Special, seeing the progression of Nebula is really cool. Like, this one, she was still kind of grumpy, but, like, you, but it's just, like, that's one of the things where it's, like, it's just, like, it's just what the character is. You can't really knock... Uh, the writing or the direct direction or Karen Gillan for that. It's just what the character arc is throughout all of these movies. So I'm really excited to see what they do with Volume 3 because Gamora's coming back. We already got confirmed for the, we Well, Kevin Feige already confirmed that, that she's coming back. So it makes me super excited that she's coming back for Volume 3. And I'm excited to see what the relationship's going to be like. Especially between uh, Nebula and Star Lord with Gamora, because obviously Nebula being her sister and Star Lord being her boyfriend, I think that that's going to be a really, really interesting way to deal with Guardians Three. So I'm really interested to see what happens next year, especially after the Guys of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Now my top five. Here we go. Number five. For me, is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I really like this movie. I love Sam Raimi. I love his Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire. I love, um, like, I love the characters that are in here. And as you guys know, I'm not a big fan of the first Doctor Strange. I think it's the worst MCU movie. But this one was a lot more horrifying, which is what I kind of expect from Doctor Strange. Seeing America Chavez was really cool. Seeing the different strangers was really cool. Seeing Wanda go full villain was really, really cool as well, especially after WandaVision, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. And the fact that we also had things like um, 
seeing, like not Reed Blackburn and the variant of Miss Marvel, but seeing John Krasinski as Reed Richards in that movie was so great because that was fan casted for a long time that we want John Krasinski as our Reed Richards in the MCU. And the fact that we got that blew my mind when I saw it in the theatre. And then the fact that we saw Captain Carter from from What If was really, really cool. Um, and the fight that she had with Wanda, she actually stood her own pretty decently until, obviously, until Wanda killed her. But I think that's what needed to happen for the story, right? And obviously, the best one of, like, hearing a voice. Like, even that... And we knew that was coming, but the fact that we just heard, we should tell them the truth, and then you hear, then you see this big giant chair, then, ba-da-da-da-da, ba-da-da-da-da-da, ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. I was like, oh my god, they're playing the X-Men animated series theme. And Patrick Stewart is back as Professor X, and I just recently watched those X-Men movies. Like, I've seen a lot of them way back, but, like, first time I've seen, like, First Class and There's a Future Past and uh, The Wolverine and Logan, especially seen after Logan. I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Uh, Patrick Stewart was playing a variant from the movie that he died in. That is, oh, my God, that is just great. Even though that, and I mentioned this in my best of... um. My best of 2020, and I think I, I think the same thing with my worst of 2020. That even though that my big gripe was it with it was um we didn't get to go into other universes. So I would have loved to see Sam Raimi like go into other uni- other universes. Like like how cool would it be if Sam Raimi directing a Doctor Strange movie in the MCU and America Chavez. And Doctor Strange get teleported into Sam Raimi's Spider-Man universe. And we saw Tobey Maguire. And we, then we got to see, like, in our heads, Tobey Maguire and Sam, Ra- Sam Raimi reuniting. Just for, like, a little bit of a cameo. And then they go, like, a little back in time, uh, a little or further in time, depending on what decade they want to do it. And then we see Ben Affleck's Daredevil. And then we see Jeff Guy's Electra. And we see all these different people before... The Marvel Cinematic Universe was even a thing, so... But I think that's what Secret... That's when Secret Wars comes into play, right? That makes me super excited to see what Secret Wars is going to be. Because if they can make that happen, that will blow my mind. But that's why Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness is number five for me. Now, number four is Thor Love and Thunder. I love Thor Love and Thunder. I think it's a great movie. I don't care what you hate to say. I think that Tyker's direction was surprisingly pretty cool. I loved uh, Christian Bale's Gore the Gold Butcher. I love Chris Hemsworth. In all these movies, I love Chris Hemsworth. But this one in particular, you know, I love Natalie Portman and seeing their relationship uh, back into the MCU after Thor the Dark World was really cool. Um, since the stuff from Endgame was pretty much just reused footage. So I was like, oh my god. They are actually doing this really well. They're, they're like, dealing with the serious moments when it needs to be serious. And they're dealing with the comedy when it needs to be comedy. And, like, I'm just like, oh my god. They are doing it. They did the thing that I expected Tucker to do. But I just love that he dealt with that. Because the All I'm Thunder to me is, like... Like, I legit have a poster behind the camera above my desk of... Thor Love and Thunder that's basically like in the style of like if Thor Love and Thunder was a comic and then I have like a official uh, calendar for next year that's Thor Love and Thunder I have the DVD of Thor Love and Thunder I I even have um, a toy hammer for my Thor cosplay from Thor Love and Thunder like I love Thor Love and Thunder I think it's a really underrated movie Um, and I think that it's one of those movies that will not stand the test of time, but, like, people will go, like, depending on what the direction is going to be for the next Thor movie, I think that it's going to be one of those movies that people look back and go, like, you know what? We actually, we actually had a really good run with Taika Waititi as 
the director. Why did we whinge about this movie? So I think that's going to be one of those things. Like, I'm really excited to see what, uh, see what, where they go next with Thor, because I'm really curious to see what they do. All right, number three for me is Hawkeye. I love Hawkeye. I think that seeing Jeremy Renner and Hayley Steinfeld, which I love, are to pitch perfect two and three, and uh, Bumblebee, seeing her in the MCU was just really, really cool. And the fact that it's a Christmas uh, show, that's gonna, that's probably gonna be up there as one of the few superhero shows and movies that I watched during Christmas. It'll be Hawkeye, Batman Returns, Iron Man 3, and the Guardians Holiday Special. I, I really liked Hawkeye. I thought it was great. And seeing, like, Kingpin there, I surprisingly, like, it was such a small thing for King, for Kingpin, um, that, for those people that are like, oh, I don't really like Kingpin, Kingpin in this episode, Kingpin, Kingpin in this episode, I'm like, it's, it's fine, it's just like, he doesn't really have a lot to do, <laughs> like, he's one of those films that's like, like, almost like, um, the Thanos, where he's like, what am I going to do next, he's kind of like the looming threat of that series, but you don't really feel it until Hawkeye says, that's why I was a threat, that's, who is, it? who I'm afraid about. Or not for about, but I was like, that's this is what I was worried about. Your mother is with the kingpin. I thought that that was so bloody cool seeing that reveal, and then seeing when we get to when we get a little further up this list, I'm like, oh my god. Uh in the next thing, but yeah, Hawkeye, number three. I love Hawkeye. Number two, One Division. Now I thought that I. Liked it because it was, like, very different. But then I was like, what happens if I go back and watch it? And I'm like, oh, my God, this is terrible. I went back and watched the first episode. I'm like, you know what? This is still a really, really, really good show. I don't know why I thought that it wasn't. But I'm like, this is a really, really, really cool show. Um, and, yeah, seeing that, I thought it was really cool watching that show and going, like, Oh my god. Vision's going out of the hex. What what are we going to do about this? Oh my god, these people have figured out about the hex. They know how... They're saying stuff in there. What is Wanda going to do? And I thought that that was really, really cool to see in WandaVision. Because I thought WandaVision, to me, was something that I didn't expect from the MCU. But it surprisingly worked for the MCU. So I'm really excited um, to see where Wanda goes in the future because in Multiverse of Madness, I think she escaped. So if we see her in a Wanda movie or Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty, sign me up because I love Wanda. Now, this is my favourite Phase 4 movie, probably my favourite movie of all time. <coughs> this movie means so much to me. I can't wait to talk about it again. You guys probably know what it is. Yes, Spider-Man No Way Home, the theatrical cut. I did like the more fun stuff version, but it didn't really add a lot. Um, like, there was stuff that they were going to add originally into the theatrical cut that they, they, that, uh, that they didn't add to the more fun stuff version. I'm surprised that they didn't keep that Toby versus Goblin fight in the movie. I was like, why? But, no, like... Spider-Man No Way Home to me is like the ultimate fan let fan fiction for Spider-Man fans. You had like obviously you had Doctor Strange in there. Doctor Strange is really awesome in the movie. Probably the best he's ever been, besides Multiverse of Madness and Infinity War and Endgame. But like I think that seeing the two Spider-Men I grew up with, both Tom McGuire, who I grew up watching because at my grandparents' house, they had the VHS of Spider-Man, and I would watch that over and over and over again with Willem Dafoe as the Goblin. So seeing Dafoe back in the mask and also seeing Toby back as, I want to say, a 40-year-old man, maybe a little older, I was like, oh my god, this is history right now. And the fact that I saw Andrew Garfield return, as soon as that theatre, like, they were like, huh? 
and the fact that he jumped out, I knew who it was because I couldn't tell by the suit. No one in that theatre knew. So when he took the mask off, it was Andrew Garfield. That theatre went bananas. I was like, going like, I know, I knew as second he jumped through the port, I was like, oh my god, they're doing this, they are really doing this, they are finally tying both of my favourite, uh, my favourite characters and my favourite portrayal of this character into the one movie. Like, the fact that we get to see Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland in a movie together, movie together, with all the villains I grew up with, like even the lizard in some cases, like seeing Electro, played by Jamie Foxx, who is not blue this time, he's yellow, which I thought was really, really cool, but I kind of wish that they kind of did the blue, like the blue lightning and stuff. Like the fact that we saw him, the fact that we saw Defoe's Goblin was really, really cool because he's one of my favorite Spider-Man villains, movie villains of all time. The fact that we saw Molina as Doc Ock, I was like, oh my god, yes, I love Alpha Molina's portrayal of Doc Ock. Which, I'm like, oh my god, I need, I really want, like, I wish that it was one of those things where it was like, the t- Spider-Man 2 didn't kill him off, and he can't lead into a third movie. Like, not as a bad guy, but kind of as a good guy, because I thought that that was the interesting thing about No Way Home was turning all the uh, bad guys good, for the most part. But I love seeing Sandman back. I The only complaint I had about Sandman was like, why is Thomas Hayden Church not making a human appearance? And it's just CGI Sand, but it doesn't matter. I love seeing him. I also like seeing Lizard in some cases. I was like, oh my god, they're doing this. The other thing I was disappointed about, but I'm going to let it slide because the scene has grown on me, is Venom. It's either you put him in the movie or you do a post credit scene of Andrew Garfield returning into either the wrong universe or to his universe and Venom is there as the Tom Hardy version. But I was like, oh my god, like, we are getting, like, fights of, like, we're getting Spider-Man versus Villains fight. At the Statue of Liberty, we're getting a, a Green Goblin versus Spider-Man and Villains fight in Happy's apartment. We're getting a Doctor Strange versus Peter fight in the Mirror Dimension, which I thought was real, real cool when I saw it. And I was like, oh my god. Like, if anything I like about Doctor Strange, it's the Mirror Dimension stuff. I thought that all of that is real, real cool. And also... Seeing, uh, like, Alpha Malia's Doc Ock fighting Tom Holland's Spider-Man was also really cool. I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Then seeing Spider-Man, then seeing Tom Holland's Spider-Man team up with Sandman to defeat Electro, I was like, oh my god, this is really happening. All the fights, all the characters, I just loved in No Way Home. This is everything I grew up loving as a Spider-Man fan. I was like, oh my god, I have... This is, this thing's complete. Like, my childhood and my life is complete if, now, like, the fact that we have way more movies to go is a uh, fact, but, like, if they haven't announced any more Marvel movies, except for the ones that we already knew, but if they didn't announce, like, Secret Wars and King Dynasty and that sort of stuff, if I, if I just saw Spider-Man No Way Home, like, I want to say, rate on how many times I watched it. And the next day I was going to die, I would go like, my life is complete. My journey as a Spider-Man fan has led up to this. And they did so well. John Watts and Kevin Feige have done it. So well. Beautifully. And that made me so happy. As a Spider-Man fan. But yeah, so guys. Thank you so much. For watching this long. Long video. Of ranking. All the. MCU Phase 4 movies I've seen. Um, I can't wait. Till we see what Phase 5. Is going to do with. Obviously with things like. 
Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania and like New World Order and Dead Apple Born Again and all that. I can't wait for all that. So guys, please hit the like button down below if you haven't already. Hit subscribe. Also hit the little bell icon to get enough for future videos I make. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye. Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon.